The keyboard shortcuts for the edit tools in Studio One are some of the easiest to remember. Numbers one through to eight on the top row of your keyboard correspond to the eight icons that we can see here in the edit tools palette. OK, so for example, if I really quickly want to choose the split tool without having to move my mouse up there all the time, I can just press number three on the top row of my keyboard and the split tool is selected. If I just want to use it very quickly and then go back to my regular arrow tool, I can press number one and I'm back to my arrow tool. Now there's a little exception to this. If we go to the fifth icon here, I'll press five on my keyboard. That is for the paint tool. Now you may know that if you long press on this, yeah, with your mouse, you get a number of different variations here that you can assign to that number five slot. So I'll, I'll just choose the square um, variation there. Now, if I go back to number one, my arrow tool, press number five again, it's using that square tool, okay, automatically. What you may not know is if you continually press five on your keyboard, it'll actually cycle through all of those available tools there, yeah? Okay, making it very easy just to continue to use the keyboard and not have to resort to the mouse. Let me know in the comments down below if you didn't already know that. Now, there's another thing that you should know about this, and this relates to number one again, the arrow tool. If we long press here using our mouse, yeah, you can see here that we can have some secondary selections, some alternate selections. So for example, say I want to switch between uh, the arrow tool and the erase tool. I'll select that. Now, what that means now is if I hold control on my keyboard and I'm using the arrow tool currently, yeah, we can see that. I'll hold control on my keyboard and it switches to the eraser tool okay and when I release control or command if you're using a Mac then it goes back to the arrow tool yeah easy yeah that's really handy when you're alternating quickly between two tools now you don't even have to use your mouse to do that long press and do that since if you continually press one on the keyboard you can see it's cycling through all of these tools for you to select the secondary tool when you're holding down the control or command key. That's all very well, but what do all these tools actually do? Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. Before we dive into what all of these tools do, I just want to quickly urge you to watch the video from beginning to end because even though you think you may know about all of these tools, I reckon for some of you, even if you've used Studio One for years, you may discover a few tidbits of information in here that you didn't already know. And I bet you think you know all about the arrow tool, huh? Well, maybe not. Now, although you may think you don't need a tutorial for the arrow tool, there may be a couple of things that you missed with it. Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to press number one on my keyboard to select the arrow tool. Now, if I go to a clip like this one down here, you can see the arrow tool in action because if I click on this, it selects that clip. OK, and I can go ahead and do all kinds of things with that. I can move it. I can delete it, whatever. Now, you may also have noticed, depending on what mode you're in, which we'll discuss in a moment, that the tool changes depending on where you're hovering in the clip. So I'm in the bottom half of the clip at the moment, but if I move my mouse to the top half of the clip, it changes to the range tool. So rather than select that whole clip there, I can now actually drag out a range and just work on one part of the clip there, yeah, just according to the selection I made with the range tool. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, you may find that behavior a little irritating or inconvenient. It's happening everywhere, yeah, with all of these clips. Bottom half is arrow tool, top half is range tool. You can actually switch it off. Now, the clue that they're linked together at the moment and have this context sensitive behavior is at the top here in the tool palette because when we selected the arrow tool, the range tool was also highlighted there as well. We can unlink them by pressing on this icon here, this kind of square bracket. I'll click on that and now the selection tool simply is the selection tool and when we hover over these clips we no longer have the range tool available of course we can select the range tool and we'll talk about that now <laughs> the range tool is handy when you want to make changes to a specific part of a clip and you haven't already sort of split it up into divisions that would be useful so i'm going to press two on the keyboard to select the range tool and then i just want to work on this little area here so i'm just going to 
drag out a box using the range tool and I can go ahead and make changes to that. Now, at the moment, it's snapping to specific positions because I've got snap turned on. You can see that the, eye, the snap icon is blue up here at the moment. I'll press the letter N on my keyboard to deselect snap. And then you can see I can make much more sort of accurate selections in that way. Now, once I've got my selection, I can do all kinds of things with it. I could, for example, press delete on my keyboard and delete that little segment there. And it's split it up there and, you know, got rid of the data there. I could also grab that and just drag it somewhere. Yeah, I'll do that now to this position over here. And you can see it's again split up the clip there and it's dragged the contents to the new position. Now, what if I wanted to uh, keep it in the same place and, you know, drag this content content to a new place but leave it intact i can do that by holding control on the keyboard and dragging and then i can drag it to a new place the clip is not split or anything it's left intact but it's just taken the contents of that range that i selected earlier to do that now the other thing i can do is make multiple selections so i've got my selection here if i press shift on the keyboard and then drag out different selections you can see here that I'm able to do that. And I can, again, delete, move them, etc., etc. I can also do that on several different clips. So I could make some more selections on this clip down here, just holding the shift key the whole time to do that. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the selections which are on this clip, I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and just click on that. And that gets rid of the selections just on that clip. OK, so the range tool is really powerful when you want to select certain specific parts of your way for and make adjustments to them. Now you also may want to sort of split these little segments up more permanently. For that we'll use the split tool. The split tool is handy when you actually want to split up the clip and treat those different parts differently in a more permanent way. Okay, now we select the split tool by pressing three on the keyboard and then we can just go ahead and click anywhere on our clip to make a split at that point. Now, of course, if we have snap turned on, which I'll do now by pressing N on the keyboard, then it's going to obey the snap rule. So that's handy if you want to make precise splits, say on a bar line or on a specific beat. OK, so I've gone ahead and I've split up my clip like so. Yeah, and we can just I'll just do that on both of the clips I have here. OK, or well, both of the tracks I have here, I should say. And then once I've split them, as I say, we can go ahead and we can manipulate manipulate them in all kinds of different ways, of course. So for example, I'll press one on my keyboard to go to my arrow tool. I'll select this clip here and now I can grab this uh, little handle here and adjust the gain of that clip and it's doing it separately to the rest of the performance. So that's one of the things you could do. Of course, you could go ahead and select clips like so, press shift on the keyboard, select multiple clips perhaps, and then go ahead and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of those clips. However, there may be another way that I'd prefer to do that. That would be using the eraser tool. So whereas before to delete a bunch of things, I was selecting something, pressing delete on the keyboard, selecting, pressing delete, or I could, I guess, use shift and make multiple selections and eventually press delete. OK, that's kind of a little bit cumbersome compared to the eraser tool, which I'll now select by pressing four on my keyboard with the eraser tool selected. I don't have to select something, then press delete. I can just click things that I want to delete really quick, really easy. So the next tool is the paint tool, and I'm going to select it by pressing five on my keyboard. Now, this tool really comes into its own when you're doing automation. So I'm going to switch on my automation here, just going to show it there by pressing that icon. And with my track here, I've got some volume automation. So I'm going to start off by using the first tool. Now, I can cycle through this by pressing um, five on my keyboard, as I said earlier, but just so it's easier for you to see what's going on um, for this part of the tutorial, I'll use my mouse and make selections up here. So I'm starting off with that freehand tool. And with this, I can just draw in whatever curves I want for automation. OK, like so. Speak for itself. When you release your mouse, it does some smoothing. Yes, it hasn't got all of those nodes in there and you can achieve what you want with just those nodes there. The next selection we have, I'll just undo that, is the line tool. Speaks for itself. You can draw a line between one point and another, and it creates a line like so. Undo that. Next one is the parabola. So this one is where you draw a curve of some kind, OK? And you can see how that works there as I draw in that curve, and it draws all the points in between that it needs to create that curve. Next one is the square tool where we can get um, these sort of square up and downs. Now, with these ones, 
um, it, it depends where you drag as to whether it goes up first or down first. Okay, so you can invert it by moving your mouse up and down like so. That's the square tool. In a similar way, we also have the triangle tool. And in a similar way, again, we also have the saw tool. And then yet again, we also have the sign tool, which kind of draws little sine waves in there. Okay, that's all very nice. Let's go ahead again and go back to the first one, which is the freehand tool. I'm just going to draw in my own little curve in there. Yeah, like a little roller coaster. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the final tool within this selection, which is the transform tool. This is just cool, fun to play with something perhaps you didn't know was there. So I've selected the transform tool. The next thing I'm going to do is just drag a box over the area that I want to adapt, which is this area here. You can see this yellow box stays here. Now I can do all kinds of things. So I could just squash it like so. Yeah. So I could just basically scale um, this this um, wave or this freehand um, change that I've put in there. <laughs> got, got my merds waddled a bit there. Okay, or I could do things like uh, perhaps uh, move the whole thing up and down like so. That's very handy. Um, I'll drag it out again. I could sort of skew it. I don't know what the, or distort it. That's the proper word, yeah. So I could do that. I can distort the whole thing. I can look, squish it up like so, yeah. All kinds of things you can uh, do with the transform tool there as I say, especially when you're using automation. Sometimes we want to temporarily mute clips. Now, one way that we can do this is by selecting a clip here, yeah, like so, and pressing Shift-M on the keyboard. That will mute that clip, and if we press Shift-M again, that will unmute the clip, yeah? M is for mute. We can also do several clips at the same time by selecting several clips and doing the same thing again, yeah? Muting, unmuting. Another way that we can go about this is by using the mute tool. Press six on the keyboard and you permanently have the mute tool selected. And I can just click on clips to mute them and click on them again to unmute them. I'm not really sure which method I prefer. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these you would use more often. <laughs> Pressing number seven on our keyboard initiates the bend tool. This is a lot of fun, but you're gonna find it difficult to use unless you've got things set up in a certain way. So before I go ahead and use this tool, I'm just gonna right click on the clip here, and then I'm just gonna switch this on bend markers. I'm gonna make sure I can see bend markers, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is just click somewhere where I wanna start adjusting some audio. I'm gonna click here, just on the beginning of this little part here. And the next thing I'm gonna do at the end of this little section, well, what I deem to be a section, is I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag, yeah? Now I'm stretching that audio out. When audio is stretched, it is red, okay? When it's squashed, it becomes green, yeah? You can see the audio after it is also changing, yeah? That's how you can bend your audio in Studio One very, very easily. Do be careful because the more you do it or the more extreme you do it, you uh, may introduce artifacts. So check the results as you do this. I could do some other bends like so, dragging these around. And I can change the bends, on, change the points which I've already selected them. So I could just hover over one of these lines and drag it around. Yeah, very, very handy when you want to stretch and morph audio to fit into particular spaces. Now, talking about the kind of bend tool, there's a lot more to it than that. But at the moment, at the top of uh, Studio One here, I can't see all of the tools that I need to really take full advantage of the bend tools. In order to do that, I'm going to right click on the top here, yeah, click on Customize, yeah, and then go down in this dialog box, box to where it says Advanced Tools. I'm going to click on that, okay, I can close that dialog box. You can see the few, few more tools available here now. If I click on the Audio Bend uh, tool there, for example, I can see a whole bunch of options here. Now, this is way more than I'm going to go into in this tutorial, so if you would like me to make a tutorial about this, let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Selecting number eight on our keyboard selects the listen tool. This is really handy when you just want to listen to one particular track in isolation from a particular point. So if I just hover my mouse over here and just click and hold. While I'm playing, it plays that section, not the whole song, but just that track, okay? So if I just go down to this one down here, can hear and see it's much quieter because it's a different track. So just a very handy tool, the listen tool. So I'm curious, have you been using Studio One for some time and there was some tips in there that you didn't already know? 
Let me know about that in the comments down below. Now, if you want to find out some more Studio One secrets, I recommend you watch this video right here, where I reveal five of them. Go on. Click the thumbnail. You need to know.